Curse Kazaa, curse Kazaa, why your brain blinds you for two hours every day. Is this when people go like, like, uh, how do they say, how do they explain it? Um, oh, there's a word for it. There's a freaking word for it, bro. Um, when they space out, right? Like you're doing something, you just space out. I don't know. You're just like staring into nothing. Just like, you know what I'm saying? Is that what it's talking about? The world you see is not real. You're not living in this very moment that you're experiencing, and nothing is like it seems. It turns out your brain constructs your reality as you're experiencing it. It what? edits your memories as they happen. It lives what? in totally different time spheres and tells you a story about the world that feels real. What's going on and who's really in control of your life? The gap between reality and you. Vision is maybe our main source of information about the world, but in reality, we don't really see that much. Only a thumbnail sized area of your visual field is in high resolution while the rest is out of focus. If it doesn't feel like this, that's because it's made up by your brain using a pretty neat trick. Each second, your eyes make three to four sudden jerky movements, saccades of 50 milliseconds, focusing from one point to another, scanning your environment to get different sharp images that your brain then edits together. During a saccade, huh? your brain shuts down your vision so you don't see a wild motion blur. This means that each day for around two hours, you're completely blind. If you could actually see what your eyes see, it would look something like this. Brrr, brrr. Instead, your brain uh, fills this time with its best guesses of what happened during the blackness. But it does way more. It turns out that you're not really experiencing time correctly. What's really happening when you're stirring milk into a cup of coffee? As the spoon hits the ceramic, light reflects off it and hits your eyes after 1.3 nanoseconds. The ceramic vibrates and creates a shockwave of air molecules that travels to your ear in 1.2 milliseconds. Heat is picked up by fibers in your fingers that send a signal to your brain in 50 milliseconds. Three very different inputs, all processed in your brain at different times. You don't experience them separately, but as one smooth, simultaneous and connected moment. Your brain takes a moment to process and then invents a reality, a present moment that's not real. What? Yo, he's he, he low-key losing me, bro. <laughs> what? What you feel is now is, in fact, a selectively edited version of the past. You really only consciously experience the world. All right, real question then. Deja vu. Does that have anything to do with what he's talking about right now? Deja vu? 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 seconds after things happened. Except this is also not really true because your brain is editing time and space way more than that, and it makes decisions completely out of your conscious control. You're living in the past. No, future. No, a made up future. Your present, what you experience right now, is kind of the future. Imagine for a second that you're a table tennis pro. In pro table tennis, balls whoosh around at 25 meters per second, which is pretty fast, so let's slow down time. Light passes from the ball to your eye in nanoseconds, is converted into electrical impulses that reach your brain to be processed after 100 milliseconds. Meanwhile, the ball travels 2.5 meters through the air, the length of the table. If your brain showed you the past, where the ball was 100 milliseconds ago, it would hit you before you could react. So what? instead, your brain takes its location, speed and direction and calculates where the ball should be in the future. By the time the information reaches you, and then it creates a fictional version of it. This is what you see fictional. in your face. Nah, he low key losing me, bro. Am I slow or something? <laughs> What's going on? Fake present, a fake ball what? that's somewhere else. But you don't need to just see the ball. You want to smash it back hard. If you acted now and started swinging your arm, you'd miss by a mile. Things are just too fast. <laughs> yeah. So before the ball even touches your opponent's bat, your brain starts predicting where it will likely be in. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. With this example right here, if he could, he should have mentioned uh, baseball pitchers because they be pitching at like 80 plus miles per hour, bro. Now imagine trying to explain that, you know what I'm saying? Space after they hit, based on the other player's posture and your table tennis experience. But as it can't be sure if it will be correct, it prepares multiple different responses. Maybe the ball will be here or here or even here. 
To be ready for all of these scenarios, your brain sends pre-programmed orders to the muscles you need to jump left, right or up, telling them to be ready for any of them at a moment's notice. For a short moment, multiple ghost versions of you exist, all equally real inside your brain. And then, as your opponent is about to lay into the swing, your brain decides on a single future that it thinks is most likely. All but one of the ghosts are deleted. You only ever experience the ghost that won, never the potential ones. The order yeah. to the muscles to act out the winning movement is triggered even before the ball is hit back to you. You are totally oblivious to this. By the time you consciously see the ball coming at you and decide to hit it and take yeah. it away. Okay, okay, okay. Nah, I'm, yep, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. In a sense, it's like you know what you know what's coming, so you adjust. So it's like you kind of already knew that. In this, I know, I, I know, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm getting By the it. time you consciously see the ball coming at you and yeah, decide yeah, yeah. to hit it in a particular way, your body has already hit it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. reality, your brain already made all the decisions. Yeah, yeah, your yeah. conscious experience is nothing oh, more than an invented future, a prediction based on the information your brain received a fraction of a second ago. This is not just true for extreme sports like um, table tennis, but also for walking. <laughs> I see. Walking is time travel. After your I game, see. you're walking back home, seemingly choosing your path and reacting to things. Meanwhile, your brain is operating <laughs> in three different time spheres at once. <laughs> oh, see, nah, this is broken down like a fuck, boy. Because that's the thing. We don't think about stuff. Like, all right, daily life thing, bro. Life, life things. Walking, eating. Breathing, blinking, everything we do, we're not thinking, oh, this is gonna happen, we gotta do it. This. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not really thinking, that's just happening. It processes the sensory feedback of the yeah, past, yeah, yeah. it calculates the current state of your body, and it predicts your future what because that, walking right? is intense. Before the signal from your foot touching the ground has even reached the brain, it's already sent the order to your foot to make the next step, and it's already calculated the muscle that's patterns crazy. for the next two. But what if something truly catastrophic happens? There's a banana peel, and you step on it and slip. How did it get here? Listen, don't worry about it. It turns out... <laughs> Yo, look at it. Look at him, bro. Oh, I'm over him. Just... Yeah, you can still see and it. And you look step on it and slip. He's like... How did it get here? Stupid. Listen, don't worry about it. It turns out your brain is ready for this. So far, we spoke of your Put brain your hands out, making catch and decisions fall. for you, but this is not really true. You don't have a central control room where the world comes together. In reality, different parts of your body are aware of different things at different times. Yeah. Your spinal cord usually knows stuff before your brain. And even within your brain, different regions process the same event at different speeds and make independent decisions. As your foot catches the peel, the gyroscope inside your ears notices a sudden change of your position in space. It submits this information to your brainstem and spinal cord, the things must happen quickly section of your body. They immediately trigger emergency recovery patterns yeah. and send orders to different muscle groups. Yeah, 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 Within yeah, yeah. 200 milliseconds, oh pre programmed. Now, nah, this is way too scientific and broken down for me, boy. What? And sequences <laughs> activate to catch your fall. Oh. Your arms shoot out, your other leg stiffens to support yeah, your yeah, weight, yeah, yeah. your core muscles contract to stabilize you. 100 milliseconds later, when you become aware that you're tripping, your body is already that recovering. You're tripping. <laughs> that you're tripping. Seconds later, when you become aware that you're tripping, your body is already recovering. You are only just now catching That's up. The art, boy. Okay, That's the art. so we've learned that your brain is constantly predicting reality around you, makes decisions about the best way to act, and then shows you an edited version, which totally makes sense. Would you really want to be in charge of all that? But your brain is not just predicting the external world. Right now, it's predicting a way more complex thing. You. Are you just a prediction of your brain? Mm. Why do you feel about the world the way you do? Your sense of hunger, your energy level, and especially your emotions are not just objective reactions to what state you're in, but predictions. Your brain's yeah. prediction of what you'll need soon or need to be ready for. You're probably used to getting food or going to bed roughly around the same time. And as yeah. the time approaches, your brain releases hormones to prepare you. A self-fulfilling prophecy. That's crazy. You get bro. hungry what or tired fuck? because your brain assumes this is the time when this is needed. That's crazy. This is the most striking thing about your emotions. They aren't just reactions to the outside world. They're predictions. When you go to a party, your brain isn't waiting to see how you feel once you get there based on how the party actually is. 
It analyzes your experiences of past parties and who it expects to be there. Maybe close friends you feel safe around. Maybe people you don't know who are a less socially secure bet. Maybe your brain remembers a party where you felt anxious and that experience stuck. This can be pretty annoying. If your brain predicts anxiousness, it adjusts your heart rate, hormone levels and muscle tensions before you even enter the room. It prepares your body for anxiety, making you actually feel anxious, which then confirms the brain's prediction and gets saved for future reference. Does this make you feel like you're just along for the ride, forced to experience whatever predictions your brain feeds you? Thankfully, it's not quite like that. Your conscious self is obviously not the decider of most things as you go through your day. But that is not what it's good at anyway. Your brain and all of these different organ systems decide a lot of things, but they're more like butlers taking care of all the busy work. You may not be in the driver's seat, but you are the passenger that decides where to go. What your conscious self is good at is long-term planning and abstract thinking. It's a storyteller that tells the story of your life to your brain and to yourself, wherever the edges of these overlapping entities melt into each other. You are able to see the big picture that your internal prediction machine could never begin to grasp. Yeah. You are the part of you that can edit and write new predictions into the system. Sometimes you and your brain disagree on what's correct, yeah. but in the end, you are the person in power who tells the story about who you are in this world. A story so convincing Dang. that you nah, nah. run this run this little bit back, bro. He's spitting. Run this whole bit back, please. The driver's seat that you are the passenger that decides where to go. Yeah. What your conscious self is good at is long-term planning and abstract thinking. It's a storyteller that tells the story of your life to your brain and to yourself, wherever the edges of these overlapping entities melt into each other. You are able to see the big picture that your internal prediction machine could never begin to grasp. Yeah. You are the part of you that can edit and write new predictions into the system. Sometimes you and your brain disagree on what's correct, but in the end, you are the person in power who tells the story about who you are in this world. A story so convincing that you experience it as undeniable reality. And as a happy yeah. accident, your conscious self is great at being happy about ice cream fascinated by internet videos and thinking deeply about Pokemon types. That's tough. What bro. if you could trick? That is so tough, bro. I love the way you ended this video. Essentially saying like, bro, this is our lives. We live it how we want. We do what we want, when we want, how we want. You know what I'm saying? It's us. We, we the ones driving this whip right now. You know what I'm saying? This, this, this car of life. We're the ones in control. You know what I'm saying? That's so tough, bro. Question. He probably has. I don't know. I feel like he should drop a video on, um, you know, like mental health and depression and stuff like that. Just because he, yo, he gets into the nitty gritty of things. Like, I'm not living my life thinking so deep into my actions in a sense. Like, oh, something, I'm thinking about doing something. But I got to think about it this way because, you know, God forbid something happens. But I don't know. It's just like the way he breaks it down to damn near like just like just the bare, 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 bare basics, bro. Like really just digging, digging, digging deep into it. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody is thinking like that. But like I said, everything, he, he I was lost. Maybe I'm slow. I don't know. I was lost, and then it just picked up, and now I'm, like, understanding, you feel me? Um, but, yeah, uh, he should drop a video on, like, mental health and, you know, depression and stuff like that. Because, I don't know, maybe he can, like, break it so... He could break it down deep enough to the point where it's, like, it's going to help people kind of, like, come to a realization of certain things, you feel me? To kind of help them. That would be fire, bro. I'm not going to lie. But I don't know if he's dropped a video like that. If he hasn't, he should. Part of the reason practice is so important. It is only, is not, it not only trains muscle memory, but it gives a larger data set for your brain to base decisions on. Yep, gives me an exist existential crisis. Gives me back some hope. Doesn't elaborate further. Leaves. What? I was born with a genetic mutation of one of my pack six genes called aniridia. Aniridia, and so essentially. 
that translates from Greek into English that the iris in my eye isn't formed properly. It's just a tiny stump. So it looks as if there isn't one. I don't have a small, super sharp area of vision in the center of my vision because I always don't have a fovea. It's a bit like seeing everything like that, like the out of focus frame of your peripheral vision and glasses don't work. Damn. Damn, really, bro? It does make hand eye coordination determining how far things actually are from me quite difficult. I am legally blind or visually impaired. This video has taught me a lot about seeing and not seeing and just about seeing and not seeing and just how amazing it is to be able to make subconscious calculations about things we don't even understand. Damn, bro. That's deep. That's deep, bro. Shit. Oh, if I'm going to end it right there, boy, no cap. W video. Let me know what you guys thought.